Hey everybody, today we're doing the most simple form of cloning, which is throwing the ball back and forth with your narcissistic friend. Who is you? One clone is good at throwing, the other one sucks. <laughs> I love you, Dad. I don't love you, son. Okay, everybody, let's go ahead and make a short movie with the fewest number of actors possible, in this case, one. Well, actually, that's not true, because in order to pull this off, you're actually going to need two people, because you can't catch a ball that's not thrown. Can't catch a ball that's not thrown. All right, let's import some footage and stop talking about boring stuff. Uh, let me just go ahead and find that. Okay. So what we're actually going to be working with is one very long take that uh, was done on a tripod. We just set it and forget it, pretty much. You have two people who you need on either side of a frame. In this case, we have uh, my good buddy Tim Riel right there. Here he is punching invisible ninjas. Or maybe he just threw the ball. But uh, this is uh, Tim Riel of Timothy D. Riel, and uh, Mr. Tim is fat. Great guy, longtime collaborator, and uh, part-time client from time to time. So uh, you get a friend to throw a ball to you. You get yourself to come over here and catch it. And at one point you switch, and I chose to take my shirt off because that's uh, how I roll. I always wear two shirts just in case of emergencies. The first thing to do is to split your footage at the point where everybody changes sides. So, da, 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 da. all right, that's about it for this. Let's just shut her down here, da, da, da. trimming it up to where it's relevant. All right, and setting that to the beginning. Uh, let's look through this. La 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 la. Da, da, da. We tell some jokes for a while, and now we're kind of ready to go. Now take your two footages and stick them over top of each other, and you will notice. Oh, I can only see one of them. So the first thing to do is change the opacity of this one here to like 50, so that you can work with it. And look, there's ghosts. Oh no, ghosts are the worst. Hey, that's not a ghost. It's old man Sedgwick who hates teens for some reason. So conceptually what you're doing is let's find a point at which uh, Evan character, let's call him well-dressed Evan, uh, has the ball and he is throwing the ball. So let's go from the throw right here. All right. So, so the first thing will be well-dressed Evan throws the ball. Now that means that on this other one, someone has to be ready to catch the ball. Now if you've timed it up well in your shot, you will have thrown and caught it in the same time, so the ball has the same hang time in the air. That's actually impossible to do unless you happen to be really consistent in your life. Uh, we weren't, so part of this tutorial is actually going to be about fixing that up. So let's get this one started off right as well. So make sure that lines up. So the ball is leaving his hand. The ball is leaving well-dressed Evan's hand. There we go. Here comes the ball. Oh, well caught, gentlemen, well caught. In this one, we see it's actually very well aligned. Uh, so we won't have too much work to do making this a really simple throw and catch. So how do we uh, how do we line that up to uh, to make it look seamless? Pfft, easy as pie, my man. Just take this, go linear wipe, add a linear wipe to that top one here. Set your transition completeness to I don't know 50 percent. Oh look at that. We have two Evans on the screen. So the top layer is just well-dressed Evan. In fact, let's call this uh, well-dressed and attractive Evan. Uh, let's just call him uh, left Evan. Let me just check. Yeah, that's on the left side. 
when you, uh, if you want to know which side's the left, here's a quick tutorial. Hold your hand up in front of you with your thumb and forefinger out, and if it has an L, that means left for left. So we've got this 50% line down the middle, and you can't really notice it too much, but there is actually something screwy that happens right in the middle here because the wind's going to be blowing differently in each take you want to go ahead and take this and feather it off like for me it's 25 but just enough to make it not 100 percent noticeable all right so let's uh play that through oh here comes the ball hey that actually looks pretty good except for this weird tumble that seems to happen in the air whoa what was wrong with the ball so when you have two elements on either side and they don't interact with each other, it's easy to fake that, hey, we have two clones here. But as soon as you have an object that goes through, you're going to need to start faking stuff. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, that's what I'm here to teach you how to do. So one good thing to do is, you know, go back to your, uh, your uh, transparency here, turn that linear wipe off, set that transparency back down, now let's look to where the ball, you know, could necessarily deviate. It's actually kind of similar right here. So if you look here, both of the balls are on a similar path at this point. Because someone's spiral degraded heinously on its way. It was me. I sucked. And so basically, um, on this frame, we want to say, you know, we'll use this frame of this project, uh, of this uh, layer, which is good. So let's uh, turn this back on and cinch it up to be very close, like there. Good. Maybe a little bit more. So that's like that. Put in a keyframe there, so at 65. And then on the next frame, yeah, it's just more. Now it's gone. So we've moved this, this line back. So it's going like that to cover up the ball. So when we look here, it looks like just a, a terrible throw. Boom. Boom. Not too bad. Throw completed. And that's pretty much it to getting things to go across. The more complex parts come when you want to try syncing up the, the footage with each other. So, see this guy here kind of blah blah blahs for a while, but, but uh, you know, you waited long enough and suddenly there's going to be two balls on the screen. Because, uh, you know, each take didn't line up with each other. So, if you want to line up all of the actions with each other, the first thing to do is to analyze your footage, and uh, you want to go through and you want to pick all of the time points that are uh, going to be keyframed actions. So, you know, what I mean by that is, the parts you need to reference are two actions that interact with each other. They are the throw and the catch. So for both of your actors, you want to go and put in keyframes using the time remapping. So go layer, time, enable time remapping. And you want to go through and, you know, you should choose for yourself, do I want the moment when the ball is just leaving the hand or whatever your point of reference is, go through and start putting in keyframes at all of those points. So the ball has just left his hand and the ball has just come into his hand and keyframe. Then move ahead. Tim's waving. And the ball is just leaving his hand. And the ball is just coming into his hand. And go through and do that on every point where that happens. I'm going to speed ahead and do that. But uh, you want to do it on this layer and also this layer. So again, that's one 
time remap keyframe when the ball is leaving the hand, one time remap keyframe when it enters the hand, all right? Meaning we're looking to get control over two different zones of time. The one zone that we want to control is the hang time of the ball so that we're able to make the hang time of the ball between both uh, shots, both takes, the same. Meaning that they are both throwing essentially the same ball. Okay? Which is kind of a, I mean, it's kind of an abstract concept, but uh, bear with me that you want to control the speed of the ball so that you can make it seem like it's the same ball in each take. So, let's go through and set that up right now. Ideally, instead of having to fumble around with this nonsense, you would have a production assistant around, or just a friend who doesn't mind you calling them a production assistant for that day. They would stand by the camera, they would have a stopwatch, they would count out however many seconds you've determined, and then say, throw, throw, throw. Bottom line for all of this stuff is, if you take the time on set, you're going to make whoever does your post-production work that much happier. If you don't care about them as a human being, then you go ahead and you do whatever you want on set. Just go buck wild. And then roll back and hit him up style. And spend until the last dime for all the hard times. Okay, I think we have enough to work with here. So basically I've gone ahead and we have three throw and catch going on. Now, what you'll be doing is you can see visually when these events are happening. So, let's just go ahead and try to line them up as best you can. Um, basically, you want all of these keyframes to fall into lines, right? And you'll see why when I uh, tip the opacity on this. So. Here comes the ball. They catch the ball. And send it back. Oh, oh no, that one ghost is lagging. So, you know, don't be in a rush to squeeze or lengthen too much. Basically, you want to try to average out between the two of them. So, take a little bit from one side, give a little bit to the other. Uh, let's see. It's a real politics game out here. And try to line these up as best you can. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And we do get into some trouble, it seems, because the balls were not thrown at the same speed. Now you can see you can click and drag and kind of make it up a little bit. So when you see these two ghost images getting, you know, closer and further apart, all you really need is one shot where they're touching each other. <laughs> uh, sounds like another job I worked on. As you can see, we've got things pretty much paralleled up. How are we looking here? Yeah, parallel, parallel, parallel. So you're basically manipulating the time here. That one might be a bit messy, but let's just not do it. So, there we go. Huh, I'm feeling better already. So now, basically what we're going to have is, here I'll just preview it for you a little bit. Let's put that linear wipe right back on. So, what do we have? Okay, so we can see where the problems are. That one of the problems here is this particular frame that we need to smooth out. And we need to smooth out this frame. But really the problem is that we need to find an appropriate place where we can safely use our linear wipe transition to make this a less noticeable problem. All right. So let's go ahead and try to do that by first, you know, I'm just going to delete that linear wipe for now because it's not really that interesting. Take us down to 50% here. And let's try to find the spot at which, oof, it's looking like right here is actually where they're the closest. So, you know, bring that linear wipe back out here. All right. 
Now, let's see. All right, this might be a little bit tricky to follow, but uh, bear with me here. So, linear wipe is on. We need this much of the image. Next frame. Mm, no, on this frame we still need this this much of this image. Next frame, not so much. We're we're done. We're we've we've had enough of you, sir. And then you know, next frame because the arm comes through. We'll take a bit more maybe, but you know, that's it. That's all we want. So play that back for us. Whoa. Kind of boo. As you can see, the trajectory of the ball gets a little bit funny there. Most of visual effects is solving problems. If you don't like to solve problems, this is probably not a thing you enjoy. If you do like accomplishing things and solving creative problems, I suggest that you uh, get into this even more. Um, you know, try to challenge yourself and grow and try new things and, you know, it could have been just as simple as showing you two people on the same frame and then cutting it in half, but you don't need After Effects to do that. You just need a nonlinear editor and that can put on masks and stuff. Not like, you know, when you put on masks like in Eyes Wide Shut and then do weird, freaky piano song stuff. That's a cool movie. I mean, if you're into adult situations, definitely check that out. But, uh, you know, kind of weirded me out. I'm not even sure how much of it was a dream, but then it was also a Kubrick movie. Anywho, uh, let's see how we're looking. Throw in the ball. Chatting. Throw in the ball. So that's pretty good. The only other things that I did to mask this were resizing my frame from 1080 down to 720, and then moving the f the uh, moving the clip back and forth and putting on a motion blur so I can hide some of my errors and you know you get that back and forth kind of camera moving and because uh, if you had to do this with a camera move in it that would be annoying so composite them both in the same frame move the move the image around you're not actually going to be moving the camera around on set I recommend you actually I insist that you lock the camera down if you don't have a tripod, duct tape it to a table, or this works well because the camera never moves. I have one of those cheap tripods, cost me like 20 bucks. That's the best 20 bucks you're ever going to spend, probably in all of film makery. Your audio could be total garbage. Record it later, you know. If you have a tripod, you have stable shots, you can do dope things in posts without breaking a sweat. This was how to do cloning. I'm Evan Abrams. That's Evan Abrams. That's Evan Abrams, too. Just remember, when you're out on set, plan ahead. This probably would have done a lot better if uh, Tim and I had have taken the time to actually draw out what we wanted on paper. But such is life. So, uh, yeah, I'm Evan Abrams. Enjoy doing stuff. If you have any questions, just hit me up uh, here or uh, at EC Abrams on Twitter or, uh, you know, all those other fun ways of getting a hold of me. Um, and yeah, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, you guys are awesome.